What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Igmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So, since last episode, I have been kind of waiting around for our tier 4 void or miner to make all the Ionite that we need. And it looks like we're there. I believe we needed 112 Ionite crystals by themselves, plus the six blocks to upgrade that to the next level. And we have achieved that. Yep. Uh, I did add in a couple more of these speed upgrades, so we have a total of four of them going, and this thing's using like 80,000 RF, 82,000 uh, FE per tick. Yeah, it's uh, quite the energy hog, but pretty much what we were trying to do is get all the way to that level five, and we can do that now. So let's go ahead and disassemble this guy, and let's upgrade it to the next tier so we can start working on the stuff for the tier six, which I don't think we're actually going to set up anytime soon. Uh, but we do need that. Um, yeah, we are going to need that for like another recipe for some of the late game stuff. Maybe a, a creative something or other. I remember seeing that using a recipe for something. Anyway, uh, so we needed to put the structure frame tier fours in here. I've already started making, uh, the structure frame tier fives. We needed 12 more though. So we need 56 total more structure frame tier fives right now. So we should be able to just craft those up, no problem, except we are missing a little over a stack of soul sand, apparently. Is there a way for us to craft soul sand, or do we just have to go to the nether for that? Looks like we can craft it with dark sugar and sand. Do we have sand? We do. Do we have dark sugar? Uh, we don't. Uh, you know what? I think we can craft that, though, right? Dark sugar, that is withered dust wrapped with sugar. Do we have sugar cane? We have, oh, we have sugar. And do we have withered dust? Wither dust. You know what? We don't actually have withered dust. Now, we can't just get that from, oh, yeah, we can. So two withered bones or two necrotic bones make the withered dust or a skeleton skull. Well, that's easy. That's super, super easy. So we'll do that. There's some withered dust. We'll place that there. Wrap that in sugar. There's the dark sugar, and now we can replace the uh, withered dust in the recipe, which is more sugar, and there's a bunch of dark sugar. Okay, well, that's easy enough. So we can do that, make some soul sand. It said we needed 70. Oh, man, was that enough? That's, like, exactly 70. I think we might be, like, six shy right now. Okay, well, let's grab one more of these. Sugar. That we're going to be able to just quickly do that with no problem. Uh, and then we'll do a little bit more sugar. Okay. So now, now we should have enough. Okay. So we wanted to do the structure frame 56. And it looks like we have everything ready to go. But we do have to craft nether stars. So we're going to be listening to the wither boss <laughs> spawn and get killed uh, 56 times apparently. Yeah. So that's awesome that this auto craft does work like that. When the system needs stars, just spawn in wither bosses, kill them, and we get ourselves the stars. Yeah, that's really, really cool. I like this setup. Okay, well, that's going to take a little bit of time. It's going to be annoying listening to all the explosions. I'm going to go ahead and wait for that to finish up, and we'll continue on, guys. Okay, so there we go. Only two more stars needed. I think that was the last explosion that we needed. Yeah, so everything's good to go. So here's our 68 structure frame... Wait, 68? Didn't we need more than 68? Let's refer back to our digital guide. I felt like it was like 72 or something. It is 72. So why do we only have 68? Hmm, maybe I miscounted. Uh, Yeah, so we need four more of these guys. Okay, well, let's craft up four more. We should have everything ready to go except for prismarine shards. Um... Well, prismarine shards are pretty easy to do. We just take some nether quartz, mm -hmm, and we come over here to our laser thingy, like so. We drop it there, press the button, and then we get 16 of those. We'll press the button again. Actually, maybe yeah, we got 17. I wish this thing would fill up with power faster so we could do like a full stack. I wish there was a way to upgrade the uh, what is that, atomic reconstructor. Yeah, it'd be really nice if that was a, a possibility to do, but I don't think there is any way to upgrade that, to hold more power, to gain power faster, sadly. Anyway, uh, we have these in the system now, so we need the stru structure free. Uh, four more of those. Let's do it. So it's got everything needed to do this. 
It's going to spawn in those four wither bosses, kill them. Okay, and while that's happening, we should take a look at upgrading the controller. Yeah, should be able to do that. Grab this guy. Okay, very good. And we want the void or minor controller tier five. That requires iridium neutron reflectors. Did we look at that before? I don't remember now. So iridium neutron reflectors require thick neutron reflectors, dense copper plates, iridium reinforced plates. The thick neutron is copper plus neutron reflectors. Did we even do any of these new, we haven't touched any of those, oh boy. And I didn't hear those wither bosses explode. Maybe you don't hear them from this far away. That's a strong possibility. So if we want to make these neutron reflectors, let's, let's start doing this. So the void or miner, we need the neutron reflector, which requires these, which requires those, which requires pulverized tin and pulverized coal. Okay. Well, I think we should be able to make the recipes for all of these things. I think the system knows how to craft them anyway. There's that and that. We might not know how to do the dense copper plates. That might be like the hardest part of this, but let's throw these into the system and tell it to craft and just verify what it knows and what it doesn't know. What just happened there? Go in there, go in there, go in there. So that's the Iridium Neutron Reflector. I want to craft one. Does it know how to craft everything? Oh, it almost does. So pulverized tin is something that it doesn't know. And then the dense copper plate, as I suspected, it doesn't know. So we can do, was it, which one was it dense? This one? Okay, so I want to come in here and do a processing pattern. This one, that, like so. So we have the recipe to craft that and that can go over into our compressor. Okay, so now the system knows how to craft those. And again, if we wanna craft this, what else did it not know? It doesn't know how to make pulverized tin. So pulverized tin, again, we can do that pretty easily too. That's this one down here. And we can say, in a pulverizer, this recipe. It's probably gonna be the easiest way for us to get those. And then pulverizer, awesome. So now we know how to make everything. So how many of those do we need? Two total? Uh, oh, we're missing iridium ingots, really? Okay, so we have a little bit of a problem here. How do we get iridium? That's just found in the world, right? You can find the ore. So iridium ore, if we look in the world generation, we can see that we can find it on... Well, how did we get it in the first place? Because we've had to have <laughs> obtained this somehow, right? Uh, let's go back to the iridium ore. Can we get it through our void ore miner, possibly? Alloy smelter. The laser. So if we did this, it's possible for us to pick that up up uh the combiner shows us how to combine that stuff the tier six and the tier five generated well then i know we've gone some of this before and i'm not exactly sure how aha i knew there was a way to do it so platinum ore smelt to a cinnabar and the induction smelter gets us the iridium yeah 100 percent chance at that and we triple the platinum so we've gone plenty of platinum Platinum. Yeah, we got lots of platinum in here. And then we have some cinnabar that we've collected from previous. So we just place both of those all up in our induction smelter. Yeah, now we get the iridium. Oh yeah, plenty of the stuff. Awesome. All right, so we want to make the iridium neutron reflector, two of them. And yeah, everything is ready to go. But it looks like this is going to be one of those crafts that are going to take a minute, especially since we're doing stuff with IC2. Um, yeah. Okay, so we'll let this recipe finish up here. Was there anything else that I needed? Uh, let's see. We wanted void or mine. Oh, it's right here, right? Uh, so we needed those. We need this. We have that. Okay, yeah. So as soon as this is done, we're ready to go. That actually went a lot faster than I thought I was going to go making this radium neutron reflectors, but we are ready to go. Here is a tier five void or miner. That feels pretty good. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to get the structure, the structure frames. Can't just type in partial things in there. You have to type in the whole word. Okay, so the structure frames, we have that. 
And then we have the structure panels. We have the null modifiers. I think we needed more null modifiers. And then we'll swap those out for the speed modifiers. Uh, is that everything? We need the assembler. Cool. All right. So we are ready to rock and roll here and get this thing going. Oh, you know what? Yep. There is one more thing. A laser core. Laser core. This thing is one block taller and it does require one more laser course. We need connector, two of them. Okay, and that should be a quick craft. Awesome. Okay, so let's take all of this down because this all needs to be changed once again. Very good. And we'll place our void or minor tier five. Oop, right like that. Give it a little bit of a right click with the assembler and everything should be built together. Now, again, this is one block taller, so we're going to have, like, a weird stepping problem, I think, going down into the structure once it finally completes here. Are we done? Is it still building? I don't know what it's doing. It looks like we're missing one structure panel. Or, no, we're missing a modifier. Ah. We're actually missing two speed modifiers. Let's place those in there. So is this thing now complete? Uh, assemble true, it's using 52,000 FE per tick. Okay, very good. So the uh, this thing, the Void Order Minor Controller Tier 5, what is the special thing that that gets? It gets us Ethium Crystal. Uh, actually, let's go back to this. So if we want to get those, we're going to need a black laser lens. So let's make a laser lens a black one so we need the clear first that's fine and then we need i guess an ink sack or something and turn it into the black one like so yep and we'll replace this guy with that so we can start collecting the specialized crystal and then once we get enough of that so we can make a tier six or two of those then we can swap out that laser lens for something more specific that we need um so i guess yeah, I guess there's like a little bit of a step here. It's not that big of a deal. We have step assist on this armor that we have right now. So, um, yeah, it's not really an issue. We can walk around. Now, the only thing is we are going to have to place down torches. So I'll get that going and then we will move on to something else. All right. So the next thing that we need to start working on here is the advanced rocketry precision assembler. Yeah, we were talking about that in last episode, how this machine will make parts a little bit cheaper than if you don't use it. You got this recipe versus this one. Yeah, I think it makes more sense that we just go ahead and make the precision assembler, especially since it's enhanced circuit board. Um, well, actually, I thought that was the one. No, it's the intricate one. The intricate one is the one that costs a lot. Yeah, that one is the one that's a little bit more ridiculous. Um, but anyway, yeah, this one is cheaper. We use less resources for everything. It just makes more sense that we get this one started here. So in order to make the precision assembler, we are going to need, yeah, the circuit boards and stuff. And I said that I did want to get this thing automated too, making these different circuits, and there is an advanced carpenter. So I think that's going to be our first step here is we're going to work on getting the advanced carpenter hooked up so we can start auto crafting some of these other recipes. And these are even cheaper too. Okay, so the advanced carpenter does require a 64K fluid storage component, some machine casings, which I'm pretty sure we've made before, and a couple of carpenters, an ME fluid assembler. Okay, so some stuff here. And then engineer's blueprint. Yeah, it doesn't look like it requires anything special, just any of them. All right, so I guess the 64K fluid storage is probably going to be the first place we start. And I, yeah, we haven't done any of the fluid storage things. So fluid storage. Let's go ahead and get all of the different recipes set up. I need to set this to the other one. So there is a 1K. Now that can use the pure, I think that's what we want to do. Pure Certus. All right, so I'll just replace all those guys in there. So pure Certus crystals. And then we want to make the 4K one, which doesn't matter. Okay, and then we want the 16K. Like so, and the 64k and I believe that is the highest tier for the base one and then there is extra cells too yeah extra cells 2 has these higher tiers all the way up to 4096 
All right, so we need to put those into our auto crafting setup. I guess I'll throw them right here. All right, so we want to make a 64K fluid storage component. That's going to take a little bit of time to happen, so let's get that going right away. Uh, so the next one that we need is the machine casing. I don't remember if we had those on AutoCraft. We don't. So let's see. What does it cost to make those? So that is a redstone engineering block plus modularium alloy. And the modularium alloy requires this stuff. And that can be made in an advanced metallurgic fabricator. Um, I know we made a machine over here. I don't remember. Is that the advanced metallurgic fabricator or is this something else? What machine is this? This is the advanced metallurgic fabricator. Okay, so we can start looking at getting this one hooked up. So back to here, modularium. So this stuff, and that doesn't require anything but these components in there. And do we have this set up to be auto-crafted just yet? No, we got power on there. We have item input, item output. Okay, so this is probably the next thing that we need to do. Yeah, and this is what we're using the chlorine for. I'm pretty sure... On these machines, since we have chlorine in there and this recipe doesn't require any fluid, it'll still work regardless. And I think if we have other recipes that require other fluids, we can replace these other blocks with more fluid inputs, I think. I'm not 100% sure on that. But anyway, so let's look at getting this thing automated. So we want a interface here to put the items in. Then we want like an export bus or another interface back here with a, a cabling uh, interface. So let's make like two of those. We might only use one. We definitely want one over here. Okay. And then this one, yeah, we can extract out with some kind of pipe, maybe just item conduit. We could do that, I suppose. That should work just fine. Or we could use like uh, item import, import bus or something. So extract, always active. We want to insert. Um, yeah, then we need to get that hooked up to our applied energistics, which we have some running up over here. I guess we could run the cable over. And then this might be a good time to make the ME conduit, I think is what it's called. Yeah, this stuff. So this uses the Ender IO cabling, but you can run the applied energistics stuff through it. So we need some fluix crystals. Can we use the purified? I can't remember. Does that work? Yeah, that works. Okay, well, we got 16 of those. I'm not sure. Oh, well, that should work. So we just do that. We just need to run it something along those lines. We can use the regular the regular cable over here. So ME glass cable, 32 of those should be enough, I think. That just connects right like this, right like that. And then we'll just run that along over here and connect it up right there. Awesome. So everything should be connected. So we should be able to do an auto craft. Uh, let's go get the recipe hooked up over here to get these things going. Okay, so we want to do this guy, these, these, and this recipe. I really wish uh, this integration here, when, you, when it has this button, it would automatically switch it back and forth for you so you don't have to be going and clicking this thing and then <laughs> fighting your way through JEI again to uh, press the button. I like the fact that it auto fills it like that, but I really wish it would press this button for you and switch it to a processing pattern or a crafting pattern automatically. Uh, so we need item input. So that should be right there. So we should be able to make modularium alloy. Should we have those items in the system? Let's see if we can craft it. I just want to make one. Looks like we have everything together. If we craft one, does it work? Uh... Oh, it did finish up. It took a little bit of time, but it did finish up. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if this is going to work because it had that fluid in there, but it looks like that does work so that's super awesome and nothing in the input and that's all extracted out of there maybe a faster cable or maybe we want some speed upgrades on this thing uh what do we got for speed upgrades yeah we want like 15 of those in here there we go okay so that should be 
yeah that should do exactly what we want it to do now um so if i wanted to tell the system to make these things again we got to switch the pattern <laughs> uh come in here do this press this button that guy do we have redstone engineering on auto craft we do perfect so we can just go ahead and come in here and throw this recipe in here somewhere right there so we want machine case and we wanted to make i think three more of those so it looks like we have everything ready to go. So hopefully this auto craft just works. So I just went ahead and crafted all the parts that we need for this advanced carpenter. Yeah, that took a little bit of time. Uh, we're able to auto craft machine casing now and pretty much all the different components, all the normal, like normal item input, normal item output, all these things, normal. Yeah, all these different things. They require a whole bunch of different random items. Those are all auto craftable now, which is pretty cool. Yep. So whenever we need to craft those, we can do that. If we, when we want to make more of these, uh, what are they called? The module machines, I guess. So anyway, here is the advanced carpenter. So that's the last part that we had to craft for this. And this is all the other components for it. Now you can do it according to this. If we look here, you can do it. So there's glass, uh, or you can do it. So it's just solid. I'm choosing to do the one with the platinum glass. You can do platinum mana or solid blocks. Anyway, uh, so we got that done. We needed seven buckets of jelly cryotium. So that's done. We needed a multi tank somewhere. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the size of this machine, I actually didn't even look at this yet. So that is going to be a five by five area that this is going to be taking up. Okay. So we got to figure out where we have a five by five area for this particular machine. Uh, so we are running out of space over here. I mean, we could put it in this corner. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it'd fit right here very nicely in this corner. I guess we can do that. This thing, we might end up moving somewhere else. You know what? I did want to look at this thing. So the Ethium, oh, look at that. We're up to almost 300 of those. Yeah, that's really good. So the, uh, tier six, I've been, I've been doing stuff off camera for a little while here. Uh, the tier six void or minor. Uh, requires four of those blocks. And then we're going to have to start into IC2 craziness here. Uh, okay. So I guess what we should do, let's make four of those. I don't think we're going to make the upgrade today, but we are going to have to make this controller for the future. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this is using some crazy recipe. Yeah. The dimension builder requires that. And I think that's it actually. So we will have to make one of those at some point, but yeah, we need the infinity catalyst. Like there's a lot of craziness before we're even going to have to worry about that. So like I said, we're not going to make it today. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it is collecting all that stuff quite nicely, which is awesome. Okay. So we want to set up this machine here, which is a five by five as we saw. Yep. So I think sneak to freeze the current preview, or you can do layer by layer. I'm pretty sure somewhere here. So that's negative one zero. Why does it say negative one? I don't know. Should, that should be zero, shouldn't it? So anyway, that's one layer, another layer, another layer, and then that's it. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and lay this all out. It's going to be just mindless block placing. <laughs> Let me go ahead and do that real quick, and then we'll continue on, guys. All right, guys. So I'm starting to put this together here, and we can see that it requires seven jelly cryothium, but then this space right here... Is completely empty. I don't understand why that is, but the blueprint does specify only seven jelly cryothium. I feel like that should be eight, and I feel like that should be jelly cryothium there, but it doesn't say that. So we're just gonna leave that one empty, I guess. I don't know if the jelly cryothium flowing into there is gonna like mess this up or how that's gonna work. But anyway, let's uh do this. Whoops. Why won't it let me place? Oh, you know what? Okay, we gotta place it downwards, I guess. Okay, so there is seven jelly cryothium. And then we have to put these coprocessors around like so. Going back into this, I don't remember what's on top of the multi tank. Oh, that's the processor. Okay, so we put a processor right here. I don't know if facing up matters or how this thing works. Hopefully that's fine. And then we just cap it all off. Well, I thought we did. We just cap. So it says we need eight. How do I only have six? I don't know how that works. 
So machine vent. I need two more of these machine casings. I thought I had enough. Apparently I do not. So there's that. So we need machine casing. Two more of them. Well, I put those two other blocks there and it says that it found the advanced carpenter. So I guess everything is good to go here. Then we can throw this in if we want the blueprint in there. But again, as we saw before, you don't need it in there. So yeah, so we have the blueprint with the structure found. It says missing fluid input. So we do have the fluid input back here that fluid input hash, but it has no fluid in there. Yeah. So I think that's what it's complaining about at this point. So we have that done. So the precision assembler going back to this thing, we want to make like enhanced circuit boards for instance. Yeah. So we need a recipe for that. So that's going to be water and then we're going to need one bronze and two redstone. So let's grab a dense, actually infinite water. So we have a compact one. This produces 160. These produce 20. We might even look at making the big boy thing eventually. I'm not sure uh, if I push it there. Yeah, that just automatically pushes water. And I wasn't sure if I had to extract or not. Okay. So we have water automatically going into our carpenter now, which is fine. Uh, is it complaining about anything else? No, it still says missing fluid input. I don't understand why it says it's missing fluid input. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, let's try this recipe here again, going back to this. So it's one bronze and two redstone bronze and two redstone. And we put that over into the item input like this and this does anything happen. It doesn't look like it. So there is something not working correctly with this machine. Mm, not entirely sure. If we go back to the blueprint, it says it has the structure is found. Now it says not enough energy. Oh yeah. I guess that is a thing, huh? So the batteries back here, do we have a, um, flux point? We don't let's make a flux point. Yeah. That's weird. That, that status didn't really reflect what it actually needed. All right. So we want to select this. That's fine. We don't need energy limit and missing input item now. So on the output hatch, which is right here, we have ourselves an enhanced circuit board. Cool. So this machine does work. So now it's a matter of hooking up uh, interfaces to this and then extracting the items back into the interface or put another interface here to complete the auto craft. All right, guys. So the applied energistics is hooked up to our modular machine over there. And I want to go put in the pattern for our bronze ingot. So that's in an input hatch or input, normal item input item input. Okay. So the item input is in the normal item input, but which one is it? We know that we don't have any recipes in it. So it's obviously this one, but it's just called a normal item input. Yeah. That's not very descriptive. Is it? Yeah, it's going to make it a little bit difficult for us to recognize the machine. And if we want to put something in a carpenter, yeah, we're not going to know where it is in the list anyway. Uh, so let's take this ME interface. We're going to do actually, I guess we can do it over here, except I don't have any experience on me. <laughs> yeah, let's just do it over here. Let me grab like, I think two levels. I'm not sure. I'll just 500. That's a little much. Let's just grab like 50. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay. So anvil, we can rename the interface on an anvil. And then when you place it down, it'll keep that name and then it'll show up that way on the pattern or the interface terminal. So this is going to be, uh, let's go back in here. So this, so that's an advanced carpenter, right? Okay. So if we come in here and we place this like this, we can change the name of this from any inter interface to advanced carpenter. Did I spell that right. I think so. Okay. So it only costs one level. So this is now an advanced carpenter named interface. So when we come over here and place it down like so, it still says ME interface, but when you right click on it, it says advanced carpenter here. Yeah. And then that'll show up as advanced carpenter when you search for it in the interface terminal over here. So yeah, it's right at the very top. Awesome. Advanced carpenter. So now we know for sure that that goes right there into our advanced carpenter. Mm -hmm. So you can do the same thing for like these advanced inscribers. If you wanted to, it says that there's nine of them. 
You could name one called a diamond advanced inscriber, silicon advanced inscriber, etc., etc. Uh, anything like that that's pretty ambiguous in the uh, ME system here. I guess that garden cloche, that shouldn't see that. We don't want that to show here. I did move the garden cloche into the wall. Yeah, I got kind of tired of seeing this stuff. I tried cleaning this up a little bit over here. Um, but yeah, now that I have clicked that button, the garden cloche should not show up on this thing anymore. No, it looks like we're just fine. Awesome. Okay, so now that we have that, um, we should try it out. So it's this enhanced circuit board is what we have there. So we can say to make one more. And is it going to work? Hopefully it does. Yes, we did get ourselves another enhanced circuit board back. That's fantastic. Okay, so other things that we want to craft on there. Let's go back into this uh, circuit board. So this is another thing that we're going to want to do. So you can automate this using an automated engineer's workbench. Now, we have not made the automated engineer's workbench yet, and I think this is something we probably should do. Although each particular recipe, like if we need hundreds of these, it makes sense. If we need one or two, it doesn't really make sense. The advanced um, or the automated engineer's workbench can only be set to one particular recipe. Yeah. So in this case, when we're trying to make these guys, it does require this. So how many of those are we ever going to need? Are we going to need like hundreds of those or just a few of them? It looks like just a few of them, right? So maybe it's not really worth doing the automated carpenter for that uh, particular thing, or I'm sorry, automated engineer's workbench for that particular thing. So I will make some, if I don't have any in here, we have 24 circuit boards. We're good to go. All right. So don't worry about that. Uh, so now we just need one more recipe here to make this guy. I think we should be good to go. Let's place that into the system somewhere. Oh my goodness. We added more <laughs> space for auto crafting and now we're running to a problem where we're running out of space again. So that is an item IO circuit board. If we try and craft that, it looks like we can do everything. It's just gotta make these printed logic circuits, which we already know work because we made hundreds of processors already. It's gotta make one enhanced circuit board apparently. Mm, oh, you know what? Yeah, there's a problem with this recipe. This is never gonna finish, let's cancel that. So go back to the circuit, this guy. Yeah, unfortunately, there is some problem with these. You have to set this recipe to allow substitutions of input. Otherwise, it'll always try and craft these and be like, oh, I don't got the right item. Yeah, so you have to do that. And then I'll know what to do with the those circuit boards. Okay, circuit board craft that and there we go awesome so that is now auto craftable the control circuit board looks like we had that auto craft already looks like we can do that just fine yep that's pretty cool and then everything else i think is not a big deal all right guys so we got that precision assembler crafted that's what we are going for for today i would have liked to have the entire machine set up but we have just ran out of time trying to set up this guy our advanced carpenter. Yeah, this whole multi-block thing took a little bit of time and all of that. Uh, so yeah, we have the precision assembler. This does require a bunch of components in order for this thing to work. Does it show the recipe in here? No, we're going to have to look at that next episode, I think. Try and figure out all the components that it requires for us to actually set that up. And then we got to figure out where we're going to set up <laughs> these advanced rocketry machines. Yeah, I mean, we could set some things over here. We're not really using this space too much. And then we also have that section over there we're not really using either. So we'll have to figure that out. But anyway, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap the episode up here for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.